What is up guys? Welcome to your 66th Java tutorial. And in this tutorial we're going to be making a GUI with radio buttons on it. And what a radio button is, it's kind of like a checkbox. But the only difference is that you can only have one radio button selected at a time. So if you have four radio buttons and they're side to side, if one's selected and then you click another one, the other one automatically deselects. And they actually got their name from the old radios, I guess. <coughs> I don't even know if I was alive during this time, but evidently, the old radios, when you pressed one button, all the other buttons would pop out so you can only have one button selected at a time. So that's your real quick tutorial on what we're doing, and also a little tutorial on old-fashioned automobiles. So, you know, this is like a two-for-one. So let's go ahead and start making this right here. We're going to have, let's see, like ten variable variables or something to start out. The first variable we need is something called a J text field and this is just uh, the same one from last tutorial and I'll just name this TF like last time and this is pretty much going to be the field that stores a text if you couldn't tell and next we're going to have a private a font variable and we're going to have four types of font we're going to have plain font we're going to have bold font and we'll name that BF best friend and we will have another font called italic font and you can't write if like this because if is a keyword so you gotta write ITF that might be confusing but hey we'll get through it and then lastly we're gonna have a font that's both bold and italic so I'm gonna put bold italic font BIF BIF it's a pretty cool looking variable BIF I gotta name more stuff BIF next we're gonna have four radio buttons and these are the buttons I was talking about so let's go private and then it's J radio button just like that and I'm gonna name my first button plain button and when you click this button it's gonna give you that plain font right there so now let me copy this cuz I'm lazy and make four more or excuse me three more next I'm gonna have a bold button BB next I'm gonna have an italic button and I'm named IB and next I'm gonna have a bold italic button named bib so now this plain gives you plain font, bold font, italic font, bold and italic font when you click these buttons. And the last variable we're going to be using in this tutorial is actually a group variable. So let's go ahead and write private button group and you can name it anything you want. I'm going to name my group for simplicity. And what this group is going to do is it's pretty much going to establish a relationship so that only one button can be selected at a time. If we didn't have them related, then it would pretty much be four separate buttons on your screen, each acting independently. We want them to each be part of a family, so that way they can know when each other's clicked and each other's unclicked, or selected or deselected, if you prefer that. So now enough with the variables, let's go ahead and start making our constructor. Public, GUI, it won't take any parameters, and let's go ahead and start making the body. The first thing that we're going to want to add in our constructor is, of course, the title, like always. And I will name mine the title. Pretty cool, huh? And the next thing I want is the layout. So I'm going to put set layout. And of course, in here, since we don't know anything else, new, new small flow layout, just like that. Looks good. So now we got a title and a layout on our window what else can we do to this well let's go ahead and add that text field that I talked to you guys about and I named it TF if you guys forgot and I'm gonna set it equal to new J text field and this field needs to be capitalized and for my parameters I'm gonna first have what's in the text field so I'm gonna put Bucky is awesome and hot that's what uh you know that's what girls usually say to me when I'm walking down the street but anyways and 25 for size and now we just need to add this text field to the screen because that we definitely want that to show up so now we got a title a layout and a text field just chilling on our screen so what else can we add well we probably want to put those buttons on there so I'm going to take that PB which is that plain button I'm going to set it equal to new J J radio button just like that and the parameters for a button is first what do you want to appear to the right of the button? I'm just going to have plain since it's plain font. And I'm going to set this equal to true. Now, hold on and let me etch my ear. Oh, yeah, it feels good. Oh, yeah, 
get in there. Now, the parameters it takes for true and false the f are pretty much true is checked and false is unchecked. So if we're stabbing a, re a relationship, we can only have one true at a time. So the first thing we want to do is set one of them to true, and later on, it's going to do automatically for us when we click it. But for now, let's just go ahead and copy this, and the rest of them are going to be false, by the way, since we only want one checked at a time, because that's kind of the concept of radio button. The next bold button is going to be equal to new J radio button. We'll put this equal to bold, and we'll put this equal to false. Now, after, let's go ahead and copy this one, and make life a little bit easier. So now we have two buttons created. Now let's go ahead and what do we name this other one? Italic button for IB. Probably should have named it a little more descriptive, but I didn't. And we'll name this italic. And this will be the text chilling next to the button. It'll set this equal to false too. And our last button is named bib, bold and italic button. So we'll just have like bold and italic sitting next to it. So now that we created these four button objects, we can go ahead and add them to the screen using add and PB. It should make this so you can add multiple ones at one time, but I don't think they do. So add BB, add IB, and add what else we got here? Uh, bib, 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 bib. Boom, tick, boom, 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 boom. There, that's enough of that. So now we pretty much created four buttons and we actually added them to the screen so that they showed up. Now, like I said before, the last variable we had was this button group right here. So that's what we're going to be doing right here. Right now we're going to be setting an object it's called group and we're going to be setting it equal to new button group like that. And this doesn't take any parameters for a constructor. And what this group is going to do is anytime you add an element to this group, it's going to add it pretty much to the group. Pretty confusing, huh? So let's go ahead and group add. And the first thing we're going to want to add is the PB, which is the plain button. So now this group has one button in it. So let's go ahead and add another one. Group.add.bb. Now the group has two buttons in it. I think you see where this is going. Group dot add IB it already has B in there for us pretty cool and group dot add and first one or excuse me the last one bib so now our family has four buttons in it and we were wondering alright how come we needed to group them we need to group them so that they know when each other is checked and when each other is not checked since we group these they automatically by default know that when one of these is checked the rest of us has to turn off so that way only one button can be checked at a time it's pretty cool functionality that they you know built that in for us and we don't have to talk to each other for us so the last thing I'm probably going to be doing in this tutorial is just setting the font which is up here PF, BF, ITF and BIF this is pretty much the fonts that I'm gonna set and I need these fonts to pass in later so the first thing, the plain font, is going to happen when you click that plain button. And it's going to be equal to new font. And in your parameters for font, first type serif. And lastly, font.plain. And give it like a size of 14 or something. Looks good. And now let's go ahead and do this for the other one. So there's going to be, let me think, plain font, bold font, italic font. So plain font, bold font, italic font, bold and italic font. So plain font bold font, italic font, and BIF, right? Yep, looks good to me. So now this is going to be font dot bold for the bold, italic font is going to be italic, and the bold and italic font is going to be font dot bold plus font dot italic, just like that. So now we got our four fonts on the screen, well not yet, but um, that's it for this tutorial, so I'm going to catch up with you on the next tutorial. Don't forget to watch it. Don't forget to subscribe. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next tutorial where we will finish this program.